welcome to my studio wine and paint because I know my priorities cheers this is my setup look 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 I think I have it super super nice for tonight it's a dark background with these green limes and glass. You know that I have my yellows from light to dark, my oranges from light to dark, and my reds, blues, and greens. When we have a still life, we have to first create a, a, a balance, create these a design because still lives are very boring as is so might as well interpret something boring and make it pretty and work on colors and the shadows and the lighting and most importantly yes composition is very important absolutely we are going to learn how to interpret the green we are going to learn how to interpret these cast shadows down here we are going to learn how to interpret highlights we are going to learn how to interpret the color we see when we p paint something that's transparent and we are going to learn how to create the body tones and the shadow areas so we're going to talk about our five tonal values and and how we mix these colors and create the illusion of three-dimensionality okay you know that we don't need to spend too much time drawing and also you may think that I am a lefty but I'm not a lefty because when I turn the phone this way it, it makes it it seems like I paint with my left hand but I, I use my right hand and it is so much easier to visualize a design on your canvas by adding a few construction lines and for that you can just put any color I'm just going to imagine my overall area where I want these elements to be on my canvas and 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 so you add these beginning lines you you envelope your 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 elements your objects and then you you can go into a second stage and, and add more details so this is much better than you investing so much time in drawing and adding details and then it's not even on the right place and so let's imagine i have a lime over here and i have a lime over here and uh this is the center of this jar and so if i have the center then i know i need the same size on each side and then this thing i wanted to go just go here and i'm going to actually I, i'm going to paint what i see but i'm also going to create around what i see because i want to make a very very cool painting and if what if my my still life is not even that cool <laughs> So if my my still life is not as cool, then I can make it cool, right? Right? Yeah, I can. I have the power. I have paint, and I have the brush. So I don't know. I don't think I like this thing there. Right there. But let's uh, let's keep it like this for now. I think. It will fill in the whole canvas nicely and I will then add the background that's going to uh, complement but I, 
it's, it's, a, it's too much towards, it's too much in the middle. I'm going to move, I'm going to offset it just a tad more to, to the right. Why am I going to move this to the right, guys? I'm going to move this to the right to be able to have the cast shadow here on this side. So I have to calculate that too into my, my painting. And so that is so important to know your values because I'm going to introduce my five values in this little painting. And now that I decided that my cast shadow is going to be taking up all the space here, then I'm just gonna move everything slightly more to the right. And my center line is actually gonna be here. And so very quickly we move and now I can have an idea of this composition a little bit better. And then we can start putting color. So if I were to create a masterpiece out of this, I would be much, much, much more careful and much, much more neater. But we are just like illustrating some of these principles tonight so that you can learn something of value and not be bored to that. <laughs> ay, ay. So, okay, let's put one line here, this one line there, and I'm going to talk to you about kisses. Uh, kisses in painting is when you have an object uh, that it's, it's not on an advantageous spot and it connects with another shape. So that's a kiss. And this is why this lemon is going to be more like here instead of right here at the end because I don't want this, this end of the vase to hit the lemon. It, you need to put your elements on s so that it creates a nice flow and a nice design and a nice balance because everything in nature is balanced and I am thinking that this could be a, a really good start for us and I'm thinking this is going to end up being a successful little painting to illustrate these values and paint transparency. So talking about colors now, because I'm actually pretty happy with my, my setup. Now look, 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 this is a circle in perspective. And so a circle in perspective is an oval. And so just add that oval there, add the, the main shape and then it, uh, it helps you. This is also an oval, the circle uh, in perspective. Look at that oval there, and then this oval here, and then this is an oval here, a cut on the top. It's another oval, but much smaller. And so, uh, pretty happy. I'm actually going to indicate my cast shadows for my lines right there and another cast shadow here and I have all this cast shadow here and then I add more a little later when I paint the background. I'm going to start by blocking in the background. What about we paint what we see? If it's black but it's in light, then it will be black in light, which will be a lighter a black. What's a lighter black, everyone? A lighter black is gray. 
is white and black. And for now, that's all I'm gonna add. I'm not going to be concerned or thinking about, is this a warm gray? Is this a cool gray? This is too early for that. Let's just block in all our objects and then we can decide other things we're gonna do later. And I'm going to thin up my paint just a tad so it flows and I'm going to add this background. I think this is a great value. It's not too dark, not too light, and you may think it's too dark because my canvas is white, but it's not dark. It's just, it's just great to cut into these objects. It's a medium gray, a medium gray, medium to light actually, because this way guys, I can actually go darker and lighter. So good to start with a medium, a medium tone. And let's uh, go ahead and make sure our shapes are all correct. And I'm going to just make, just visualize it and fix my, my negative space and block this in real quick. Um, this is clear and so I see the background color but I have air from here all the way to the back. And so if I have air, it means it's going to be a, a lighter version of my background and not as dramatic as this one I'm painting. So that's how you would do the gray back here. You, you modify it just a tad, but I will not Put the gray there quite yet because I want to put the line in first. I see green. Well, I only have uh, three greens on my palette. I have a set green and I have the, a light green, the lemon green, the meridian green. So for my limes, I'm going to pick a body tone that is set green and I'm going to indicate this color where my line are my limes are so this is one line this color where my line are my limes are so this is one line just set green, guys. Pure set green straight out of the tube. I'm going to put this one here too. And uh, you may be asking, but Virginia, the lime has yellows and it has a lighter area and it has a darker area. Yeah, the shadow and the highlights and all that. Yeah, yep, yeah, I know that. And we will introduce that on the next stage because we first block in the body tones and I actually forgot to draw or to mark these lemons here or the limes so let's go ahead and add those in here just indicating their body tone. And then this one here is more up. I think it makes a cute design, but now that it's all down, I can think of a flow. And I actually think 
it does have a nice flow to keep your eye circling into the painting. Very important. My focal point, I haven't decided on my focal point, but most likely is going to be right here. This is going to be my lightest spot right there. So people can start reading my painting from here and keep reading around it and keep coming back. And we can create our areas of interest throughout the painting as we develop. But nothing will work if you don't have an interesting design to begin with. And with the values and all to tie it, to make an appealing painting. And my table is this, the cardboard, as simple as that. I thought it was a cutesy beige brown color. And how do I interpret that color when I look at it? I see a light, is it yellow? I have a yellow on my palette that is similar to the color I see, and it's a dull yellow. My dull yellow is yellow ochre, and I'm actually going to mix my dull yellow with some white to cool it. Yep. And so, this is how we understand color, guys, by understanding the principles and what light does it and what light does to the color. In this case, I have my duller yellow ochre mixed with white so I can make this yellow um, cooler. And I think that is a great color for this tablecloth. And I'm going to just simply add a little bit more white to that background gray and introduce that in here wonderful it is that you can place the paint and try the color and then you go oh no it's not good and then you adjust right just block in this color we see through the glass for now that is all a, such an important step for you to be able to visualize your overall design so that you can make adjustments before getting all crazy into uh, the, the detailing. Okay, so guys, I see on my steel life that this is actually the reflection of my background right there. And I see the reflection of my background right there on this side too. A little bit there, and this is a little bit darker. Why is it a little bit darker? Because it's folding and it's coming towards me. I'm going to fix that color a little later, but for now this is good. I'm only using grays for now, black into white, or yeah, black into white. And then here I'm going to have the reflection of the background as well. And mind that as you apply these shapes and colors, you can continuously make adjustments.
and keep fixing. There is a rim and the rim. Now, also, I hope you guys are watching. So let's just go ahead and introduce this lighter version of glass, which is this lighter gray on light. And I'm putting this down very simplistically because that's the best way to start. You simplify it to make your life easier so then later you can uh, improve on it. Improve and and refine. All right, so now I uh, see some of this table color going through the glass as well. And I'm gonna go back into the yellow ochre. I'm gonna mix it with white because that's the color uh, I used before. But I also have air going through the glass and I'm going to just add a little bit more white just to modify the color just a tad. It's not the same color that you see going through the glass and I see these reflections and I think it's also very important to understand if you see a color because it's a see-through or if it's a reflection for example this here is the reflection of the table hitting this side of the glass it's not the see-through. Now here is the see-through and then it creates a few circles. And then here I have some of this lighter gray. And I think I'm basically very, very happy with my blocking in of sorta like and we are going to now work on cast shadows and shadows and so and then we have another 30 minutes to refine and make that really pretty cast shadow of this line into this yellow table is the complementary color of yellow into my value so let's say I have a value this dark. I made my value with gray. And the cast shadow is, uh, the complementary color of yellow is violet. And so I'm gonna dip into my violet and I'm going to create this cool shadow color right there. Actually, shadow color, no. I'm creating the cast shadow Oh, that's a really pretty color. So decide on your value first, and then you put the complementary color in. And that is a step one for the cast shadow, or shadow for that matter. You know that cast shadows take two steps to create a pretty shadow. I have cast shadow in here too, and this cast shadow is so interesting because it makes a little a little it has a, a, a transparent area too that casts so I'm just gonna make all this into my cast shadow look how pretty this looks already it's starting to give me dimension I have cast shadow under there and then oh, I'm gonna have cast shadow under there, but not with this big brush. <laughs> now let's create a cast shadow for the vase on the back. So if I have a, a black background, which is my gray, what's the color of the cast shadow? Well, isn't black pretty much into a blue? 
This is like a bluish. I have to decide what color do I see. I don't see black. I see a bluish black. Complementary color of blue is orange. And there you go. I'm going to put orange on this mixture of my black and white dark gray. And I'm going to create a cast shadow for my base right there. And I don't even have a cast shadow there. I don't see it. But I know the principles of what light does to color. What lies, light, uh, light does to my objects. And so I'm just going to edit because I know that is the right interpretation of the cast shadow in black. I can even put in a little bit more that color, more, more blue, and I can keep adjusting, but I'm going to keep the back, the edges softer. And that helps tremendously with my, my composition. And maybe I don't even see it, but I want it there. And so I'm going to edit. Yeah, it's really pretty. I like it already. And I think I am done with the second stage. Let's, let's refine it now. And that is the part that you, you so quickly put these tonal values down to really help you get a feel of where you're going. Let's, let's work on this um, lemon first. And I'm going to, actually, we can work on all lemons. And now I'm gonna uh, use my mall stick to help me. And one more step. I'm going to mix my green ahead of time here on my palette. So I'm getting my set green and I'm going to mix my set green with white. When in doubt, always remember that color in light goes on white and color in shadow goes on gray. Good. I think it's an easy, easy rule to follow. And I'm going to introduce this body tone to a few of these lemons here or lime. I always confuse these names. Lemon and limes. I know it's a lime. Uh, this one here is a lighter. Let's, let's create some drama on these three ones that are in my pot. I always confuse these names. Lemon and limes. I know it's a lime. Uh, this one here is a lighter. Let's, let's create some drama on these three ones that are in my pot. Let's make some shadow color. Shadow color is gray so that you can know the value. And then you introduce the complementary color red of green into that shadow. And you create the cooler version of the shadow. And I am, I am mixing this color here on my palette and I'm going to introduce it to my line. So that is the first version of the shadow. It's pretty. Pretty, 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 pretty. I see shadow here. And I see shadow here. And one thing that's cool about these guys here in this pot is that now 
why what about we think of these shapes of the shadows are they pretty could they be more like there or there or you manipulate okay you manipulate the shadows and make it so it it's actually charming and it makes it a good composition so let me introduce the screen back in here uh-huh and I'm gonna go back into this screen here and I'm going to create a smooth edge and I'm not going to be stressing about all the other colors I see until I have this one down first and I see a very very dark shadow cast shadow actually here And I see much darker area there. And I also see some cast shadow here from this guy there. Now, what's the best way to create that illusion, guys? Is by the rhythm of application. So you put that there first, and then you come back with the color of the line and you go in front. And so it's important to know the order of application as well. So now that I have my shadow one, what do I have to do? I have to go back with green into the shadow. And then, so you introduce the green back in there. And don't get rid of all the edges, the cooler edges of your lemon. Let's make a lighter green for that part here, hitting the light. And this is a lighter green too light hitting there and there's light here it goes all the way down actually ooh, I see a pretty green now that's the time when you can get really crazy with your colors and make it beautiful as beautiful as you want I think I see I'm, I'm mixing oh look at that I mix some of the cooler green into this now, the viridium green, and that adds some charm to it. Now, remember I mentioned this was going to be my focal point. I'm going to get white, and I'm gonna go into the lightest color I have on my palette, which is my lemon green, and I'm going to make that super light so there you go i think a second pass of refinement is necessary obviously i'm almost painting this painting a la prima which is just this one pass of color and then you you're done but I would um, continue refining after this stage as well. I see a little bit of a reflection there. And then I'm going to go back into my shadow color and cut into it. And then I also see a little bit of a cast shadow there. And see, the thing is, even if those are not the colors that you exactly see there, but they represent the lemon so, so well that you can use it. You use it because that's what you want to do. You want to 
you want to represent what you see and we can then later adjust all these colors. Um, you can put a little bit of yellow and that's how it goes with these guys here. Beautiful, beautiful. I liked. And you know, then there's this little dee -bee 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 -bee. The little ending there, you can add that to indicate all these little details, pretty little things. And then I'm going to go into my shadow color. I'm becoming lazy and I'm trying to rush. And so I'm not even cleaning my brush in between. That should be my reddish complementary color green shadow. Yep, it creates the really this perfect illusion. And uh, we can go back into our purple mixture of the yellow here and intensify the cast shadow. And intensify the cast shadow. And then we can have the, we can create the reflection on, on these limes and they are the complementary color, whatever is hitting here on the table. Mm, so what about we bring in this color here? Blue. Back and forth, back and forth, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. All right, all right, all right. Don't get lazy, Virginia. So now the glass, easy. Let's mix the black and white for the background. And we can now just simply go back in and refine the shapes. I think it's very important that when you paint, you remember that Everything has dimension in terms of it's all three dimensional, so you don't use your brush just like that side by side. You also have to come up and down, and I think that helps so much with, with creating the illusion when you respect and you uh, make the the shapes with the brush. And I'm going to go with a lighter gray now. And I'm going to start refining these shapes. This is my gray on the jar with the air that I was telling you about. Here is a little bit darker again because the lemon, the lime is casting shadow on this glass. I see a lighter gray right there. Actually, we can do almost like yellow reflecting here on our glass. Yep, we can, and I'm, I will. So you can see how the yellow reflects on my glass. So all this is building for the final moment or for the final stage when we can start adding all the pretty highlights and details and, and building, building, building. And you may be asking me, but Virginia, look, I see the, the lemon is distorted. Mm. So why do we do, why don't we do this? We just bring this shape in front of it. 
and then it distorts it and then you have the glass there and then here is the center I think my thing is not quite in the center but I can fix it now so there and that's when we have to go ahead and fix all of it there and there uh -huh. it's starting to take shape and i love it i love it i love it that's the funnest part there and there and then here we can use the yellow ochre with white and we find this shape make it pretty right there right there and we can go ahead and fix what i i mixed back there we have to cut into this shape here so we can bring in the background color to it and fix it ah the beauty of paint right yes the beauty of paint this background color it's going to be darker and we go around and accentuate everything yeah just like that and just like that so so and then and then the highlight I see is blue I'm gonna mix a little bit of I'm gonna use tallow blue just because I like tallow blue and tallow blue and white and I'm gonna add a few just for the fun of it I'm gonna add a few highlights that I see there and there and we can make I see a highlight there and here and I see a highlight there and we can make a highlight there even if I don't see it, but I know that it's the shape of my, my thingy. So why not help your painting? And then here we can add this reflection from the table. It's 8.25. I see yellow. And then we can beautify and add all these other things that are necessary to tie. your your objects to the to the canvas i can adjust this here too with the background it was too crooked when you when you're painting i know you will be stopping and stepping back and taking a look if it's all right and don't do it like me. You just keep painting, 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 and never double check, but it's okay. This has a purpose. It's just that purpose to show you. Whoop. That's the reflection, and that's the that, and that is that. And then here we can go with the darker darks and add the cast shadows and then you can add more details lighter 
lighter lights, darker darks. And you can also introduce the, the warmth to your grays if you want. I think I am so, so, so pleased with this little painting. I was really looking forward to paint glass with you. Add some of this yellow area to the line here. And just keep adding all these beautiful colors and get crazy with the colors once you decided on the values and you recognize all the values correctly, then you can get crazy with the pretty things. Uh, that's a little doopy doopy doops there. And I should switch brushes, I know. I'm still using my big brush. <laughs> oh dear. You know, bigger brushes, the faster it finishes, uh, you cover up. So make it break it make it again this is the highlight right there and when you mess it up you come back with the color and back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth and look at that you just make it prettier as you go and always clean colors always never mix the shadow color into your body tone body tone is clean colors always colors in white at the maximum and the cast shadow here again bring back the green look how nice you can be working on these and keep improving and bring it to life bring it to life ah gorgeous fun 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 In case you want to know more about it, uh, you can contact me, go to my website or watch my YouTube videos and you can learn more then. All right. Bye guys. Cheers again. And don't forget to subscribe.